There's a lot of the old normal in Washington today, and by that I mean finger pointing. President Trump blew up stimulus talks with a tweet yesterday, but he blames the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The House Speaker in turn says no, it was the President's Twitter tantrum that blew things up. Well, here's what a leader of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce says with all this in limbo. Washington's failure to enact additional COVID relief will be felt on main streets and at kitchen tables across the United States. Those are the words of Neil Bradley of the Chamber of Commerce. He, Neil joins me now. So, Neil, one thing the Chamber has is great antenna up on Capitol Hill. Uh, we're in what I call an old normal, uh, finger pointing here in Washington. The president says now, he backtracked a little bit and says, now I'll take small deals. Uh, let's send stimulus checks to people. Let's maybe do an airline industry help. Uh, what, what, is your, what is the morning after pick up the pieces today? Is this dead till after the election? Well, we sure hope not, John, because uh, as we said yesterday, uh, Main Street, uh, American families have been waiting long enough. This should have been done months ago. There was an opportunity for a deal months ago, and there's plenty of blame to go around on both sides. What we hope is that rather than finger pointing in the blame game, which is what we normally see often, too often in Washington and election seasons, that they can come together quickly. One of the things that we've identified, a quick path forward, is a bipartisan proposal that came out of a group in the House called the Problem Solvers Caucus that doesn't give everyone everything they want, but would provide the relief that we know the economy needs and that in particular small businesses needs. It's on a shelf, it can be picked up, up, they could come together in a deal in a, with a deal in a week if simply there were the will to do so. Well, you can get a phone call returned by the White House Chief of Staff. Uh, any indications they would accept that? The president's tweets today sure seem to suggest no. Well, you know, uh, everyone's looking for alternative paths. The, the truth is, is that uh, it's very difficult to see how uh, single issue bills will make it through the process. And truth be told, Airlines need assistance. Small businesses and restaurants need assistance. Nonprofits, uh, families with unemployed. One in five Americans who worked in the leisure and hospitality industry in February are unemployed today. We're not going to piecemeal this together. We need to pull it all together. We need a package that supports the economy. It's doable. We just got to stop the, the trading barbs back and forth and get people around the table and, and, and get ink on paper. Well, it is a glaring example of how, as I like to say, Washington is not America, and America needs help right now. This is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics about the impact right now of COVID on the economy. Uh, we're still missing 10.7 million jobs that were there in February and got wiped out. Some have come back, but we're still almost 11 million short. 80% of jobs related, you mentioned, to the service industry uh, lost. Uh, of the jobs lost related to the service. Four million small businesses have exhausted their PPP funds. 78% of small business owners say this economy is average or poor. Uh, people need the help, but we're 27 days, Neil, from the election. And again, if you listen to the speaker, listen to the chief of staff at the White House this morning, it appears this is gonna be left to the American people to litigate at the ballot box. You have any hope that can be changed? Well, our message to Speaker Pelosi and to the administration and anyone on Capitol Hill who will listen is this. The politics of getting a deal done that addresses the problems, John, that you just outlined is good for everyone. And so there's plenty of other things for our elected officials to fight about and to campaign on. It would be good for everyone and more importantly, just good for their constituents to get this agreement done. I'm not saying I'm holding out hope uh, that the trend lines don't look good, right. but gosh, you, you sure hope that reason and common sense will come into play here. Reason and common sense are hard to find in this town uh, right now, as you know full well, but we shall see. Neil Bradley, appreciate uh, your time today, sir. But thank you. Thank you.